South Africa is Canada's largest trading partner in sub-Saharan Africa, with two-way trade reaching approximately $1.2, $1.8 billion. That was in 2008. It's declined slightly. It's estimated that Canada is the sixth largest investor in South Africa as well. Now, joining us to discuss trade investment opportunities between the two countries is Canada's High Commissioner to South Africa, Adele Dion. High Commissioner, thanks so much for your time. Many people always think of Canada as an afterthought, I dare say, to the United States. Everybody wants to access the U.S. market. There's a goer. There are all sorts of preferential trade agreements. And then there's Canada as a footnote. Does that bother you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having me on the program. And also, uh, good afternoon to your, your viewers. Yeah. Um, it, um, uh, I wouldn't describe it as bothering us, but um, I, it's a fact and it's something that we work very hard to change. Yeah. Okay, the issue is what are you doing to change it? Because people see America as the largest economy, the biggest yeah. market, they want that kind of penetration. And yet, there is a high middle income economy north of the United States with a big market, and we should also be looking in that direction. So in terms of profiling Canada mm. as an investment destination, what's being done? Um, what we do is uh, we work very hard uh, to identify uh, South African uh, companies, mainly SMEs, who are uh, who would be good partners with uh, Canadian SMEs now this is definitely a one step at a time uh, mm -hmm. activity uh, because the mining sector is the sector that is most familiar to um, uh, both sides South yeah. Africa and yeah. Canada and um, the biggest in terms of investment and um, uh, trade um, we for example attend um, in large numbers the uh, mining in Daba in Cape Town every mm -hmm. year uh, but we do very much have uh, on ongoing partner arrangements with uh, South African companies looking to partner with, uh, with Canadian companies. So we tend to uh, take a, uh, a, a low-key but um, partnership intensive approach. I mean, we talk about trade being in the region of $1.8 billion in 2008, possibly $1.2 billion in the last year or so. Is a, is a large component of that minerals and mining goods? Yes, a very large component is part of is that partly because, of course, these are um, are very high value goods, um, but also because it is the sector where Canada and South Africa have been traditional partners for longest. And um, I must point out, it's by no means all one way. Yeah. Uh, for example, one South African com uh, company that has been very very important in Canada is De Beers. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been in Canada for. 50 years and it's really thanks to uh, De Beers mines, uh, mm -hmm. diamond mines in the Northwest Territories that Canada is now the uh, third largest wow. diamond exporter mm -hmm. in the world. So very, uh, very close and long-standing relationship. And we share expertise is what exactly. you're saying. How do Canadian mining investors feel about the general rhetoric around nationalization and those kinds of issues in South Africa? Because there is so much of an untapped mining economy across the African continent, mm. but investors in general don't want to deal with uncertainty. Mm. Do you have to feel those questions? Yes, we do feel those questions all the time. Um, I, I think particularly right now, because of the inter international economic slowdown, um, investors in all sectors are, um, are being cautious. The main, uh, in, in terms of the mining sector, always, uh, it's exactly as you say, investors don't like uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And in the mining sector, it's always a, um, a long-term investment. So um, my, uh, our um, uh, companies looking to invest in South Africa um, always want to know, is this a policy or is it only a policy mm -hmm. discussion? Uh, what are the positions of the government of South Africa as opposed to the mm -hmm. public debate? 
street. And uh, they also tend to be very concerned uh, in South Africa, as everywhere, about the regulatory framework. That is another big one for them. Another area where you do a lot of business is agribusiness. And that's important because we know that rural development is a key pillar yes. of the South African government's uh, poverty alleviation and job strategy. What lessons can we learn from a Canada? Um, I think in uh, agribusiness as well, um, one, again, um, a, a important Canadian lesson is always the, uh, the partnership approach. And um, uh, when entering a market, Canadian companies tend to try to identify very closely with that market. So for example, here in South Africa, an important Canadian company is McCain's. But many uh, South Africans simply do not realize that McCain's is a Canadian yeah. Yeah. company yeah. producing very good chips. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, all of um, uh, McCain's uh, raw products are sourced here in exactly. South Africa. So again, it's very much um, investing in and working uh, with the host country. Over the last 20 years, Canada has provided over 200 million Canadian dollars in development assistance. A lot of the work uh, directed towards HIV and AIDS and for obvious reasons yep. and increasingly attention is focused on training public service staff. Why is that? Yes, we our two uh, development assistance priorities here in South Africa are as you say uh, working in the uh, field of HIV AIDS um, not only to uh, capacitate um, uh, healthcare workers but also uh, to provide assistance to uh, the most disadvantaged communities. In terms of uh, service delivery, our key focus is um, working with governments to um, uh, build human, uh, 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 human resources capacity uh, to improve delivery and um, uh, help institutions uh, work more effectively and mm -hmm. efficiently. Interesting, because of the status of South Africa in the region, uh, we are also partnering uh, with South African authorities to uh, do institution building in third countries in sub-Saharan Africa. We have a very interesting project, for example, where we partner with South African institutions and work in uh, Botswana, Rwanda, and Burundi. So yeah. It's pretty service exciting. Service delivery is quite topical, so we'll follow up on that yeah. one. We've just come out of COP17 and um, much debate as to whether or not that is an agreement, not an agreement. But what we do know is the Canadians have pledged to be part of a legally binding framework by the year 2015. So there is a sense that the Canadians are environmentally aware, but they've been very slow in coming to the party. Best practices on environmental issues now that the two countries are really forging a closer relationship. Mm. Um, I must uh, I must say that this is not my area of uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. um, I do think uh, certainly in the mining sector, for mm -hmm. example, which is one that I know well, mm -hmm. um, Canadian and uh, South African companies uh, work very closely together to promote uh, best practices mm -hmm. in uh, environmental impact assessments mm -hmm. and uh, also in corporate social responsibility, which of course has a very important uh, environmental um, uh, yeah. component. 